All right, good morning, friends. It is a new day, which means it's time for a new tutorial. Um, <laughs> you're gonna hear noise in the background of today's video because we've got a couple of new friends in the family. We've got Miss Beelzebub and Mr. Mercury sitting on the door. So if you hear bird noises, Mwah! It's because we've got birds now. <laughs> but that's not what we're gonna be doing today. Today we're going to be doing a yarn dye video. I'm going to be doing my first attempt at acid dyes. I've done natural dye before, and I've done food coloring dye, but today I'm going to be using jacquard acid dyes for our wool dye. So if you're interested in seeing me do a little bit of an experiment and mix some colors and have a little bit of fun in the kitchen, stick around. So first things first, let's talk about what you're gonna need if you want to do the same thing I'm doing today. You're gonna need some glass jars. I'm gonna be mixing up my dye in the jars before I pour it into the big stock pot with the yarn so that we end up with a more controlled dye process. As for tools, you'll need some tongs and a wooden spoon. Also, a colander or a strainer or something that you can put your yarn into when it's time to rinse. You'll also need a big stainless steel pot. Mine is stained with iron and dye and all kinds of things. Uh, you could also use an enamel pot, but I would say probably don't use a cast iron pot or um, I guess a copper pot. We don't wanna alter any of the colors using different metals. So stainless steel or enamel, uh, it's gonna be your best bet. You're also gonna need some yarn. I am going to be using this wool. I've got two different skeins here. One is a soft weight cream colored wool and the other one is more of a bleached white and it has some shimmery sparkly bits in it. We're using wool today because wool works best for this. If you're using cotton, the process is going to be a little bit different. So for the wool process, you do need to scour the wool, which is the process of removing the oils, basically soaking it in soapy water. But for this process, we don't need to do any pre-mordanting. If you've been on my channel before, you know I do a lot of natural dye here, uh, which requires a pre-mordanting process to allow the natural dye a pigment to actually stick to the yarn. Since we're using synthetic acid dyes this time, we don't need to do any mordanting. And that brings us to the dyes. I'm using jacquard acid dyes today. These were lovingly sent to me by Miss Frida from Sweden. So thank you, Frida, for sending me these dyes. I'm very excited to use them. I have been warned they are very potent and this is enough to dye 100 skeins of yarn, so I need only a little pinch of the dye. We're gonna be doing a bit of an experiment today because I've never done this before, but I'm gonna try and hold back. I'm not gonna pour the whole packet into the water. We're going to mix tiny amounts of dye to create some different colors. And I think we're gonna do sort of a tie-dye feel where I'm gonna add bit by bit in different colors to create sort of a modeled uh, skein of yarn. So, if you've got your acid dyes, you're also going to need something to measure them out with. I've got this teeny tiny little scoop. It is in uh, Swedish, but it's a one milliliter scoop. If you are someone who does not work in milliliters, it's like a pinch, but I'm not gonna use my hands because it's so pigmented. I don't wanna get fully stained by it. By the way, if you're worried about getting stained, also use gloves. I'm not gonna use gloves because do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> Okay, well, let's get started. To start, I'm going to take my stainless steel dye pot and I'm gonna fill it to about here with warm water, just warm water at this point. Oh, also, I left out one ingredient. You also need citric acid. If you don't have citric acid, um, I think you could probably use ascorbic acid or maybe even vinegar. It just needs to be an acidic dye bath, hence acid dyes. So I'm gonna fill this up with water just enough so that the yarn will be sitting kind of free floating in the bottom. But we don't want it to be like a full dye pot. Does that make sense? Anyway, I'm gonna put it on the heat and I'm gonna get it to a medium heat. We don't want it to boil. We just want it to be about 80 degrees Celsius. 100 is where boiling happens. So you want it to be steamy, but not boiling. Now I'm gonna get the yarn out of this dye pot and just give it a rinse to get any of the soap off of the yarn. I love the smell of wool. It smells so sheepy. I know some people don't like the smell, but for me, it's like a nice animal farm smell. Like it. All right, here's what the yarn looks like before we get it into the dye pot. Just some nice creamy white, not quite stark white, but here, I'll show you against some printer paper for color. 
It's got a creamy sort of warm yellow white. And I'm just gonna go ahead and pop this right into the dye pot so that it can start soaking in there and warming up. What are you doing up there? So Frida sent me some instructions to go with the dyes. For the stove top, I'm filming. For the stove top method, it says fill the pot with enough water to have the fabrics fr swim freely and then turn off the heat. Then it says add dye powder to the pot and stir. So I'm already going to go off track on that one. What I'm going to do is I'm gonna get some warm water in my jars and then we're gonna mix up the dyes separately in the jars before pouring them onto the yarn. Let's see what else it says. Add the fabric or the yarn that has been thoroughly wetted to the dye pot. We already did that. And then after all of that, we're gonna add a quarter of a cup of vinegar or a teaspoon of citric acid. So yeah, vinegar works fine. And we want to keep the temperature for half an hour. Okay, so let's mix up our dyes. So these are the colors I've chosen. Emerald green, Kelly green, spruce green, pink, yellow sun, and salmon. I think these colors are gonna go great together. I'm gonna start with the tiniest little bit of each color. Just the tiniest, tiniest little bit of it. Oh God, it's on my floor. Okay, well, let's just start like that. Don't breathe this stuff in. I've been advised not to breathe it in. Maybe wear a mask if you're doing the same thing. What's up? What's up? Now I'm gonna mix in some warm water into each of these, oops, each of these jars. All right, so now I think we're gonna start pouring in some dye. I'm a little nervous, but let's start with the Kelly Green and just get a little blip of that on the yarn. Let's go in with some spruce green. I don't know what I'm doing in case it wasn't clear. I'm just pouring right into the dye bath. Going in with some yellow. Now I think it's a good time for some purple. A little purple here, a little purple there, a little purple everywhere. Some salmon. Oh, is that salmon? Maybe that's fuchsia. There's the salmon. Well, the Kelly Green seems to have stuck pretty good pretty fast. Let's add more of that here. And let's put some Kelly Green over here. What are you doing? What are you doing? What you doing? Okay, okay. So, so far, not the most exciting. That's okay. We're gonna get there. I think we need to pour in pink. Man, I don't know. Is it working? It just sort of looks like a muddy water with green in it. Okay, I think more yellow. I don't know what I'm doing. I also think more purple. When in doubt, change the order of operations until until it makes sense. So far, not making sense. The color is not sticking. And I think it's because there's no acid yet. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab a little teaspoon of citric acid. And we're just gonna sprinkle that right on top. And we're gonna see what happens. Okay, so I think the water looks clear now, which means that whatever dye was in there has gone into the yarn. So that's good, but that means time to add more dye, right? So let's do some salmon. Let's pour the rest of the salmon on there. And also let's add more Kelly green, because that one seemed to sit really well. And then the spruce green. We'll see how that sits. We'll give that a minute. And then I guess we'll add more purple. Man, I don't know. This is different than natural dye. But it looks like because of the acid, it's stuck a little faster. So now you can see the water's green. So maybe it'll turn some of this green, which would be cool. And then we'll add more purple. If you keep your eye on this part of the pot, you can see the water's green. This will turn silver again. Are you yelling in a vase? <laughs> that sounds demonic, which makes sense. Okay, so the water is not quite clear yet, but I have no self-control, so I'm going to add the rest of the purple in now. Just gonna pour it in without really thinking about it. Let's hope that something wonderful happens here. Okay, the water is almost clear, and again, with the lack of self-control, I'm gonna take some of the pink, just as a powder, and I'm gonna just drippity drop it. Ooh, that's pretty. Oops, that was way too much. That's okay, it's called art. And now I'm gonna pour some yellow right, right there with that pink. Ooh, 
That's more fun. I think I want to do the same thing with purple, where I just sort of put some of the pigment right on the yarn. And we'll see what that does. Okay, I like this game. This is a fun game. Now I want to do the same thing. I'm going to do that with sapphire blue now. The rules are, there ain't no rules. Wow. What about jet black? We could add some jet black to this yarn. That might be fun. I say, let us do it. Four, the rules are, there are no rules. More yellow. All right, let's give this a minute to clear up in the water and then we'll see what that looks like. <laughs> Maybe it'll be amazing. Okay, I have an idea. I'm gonna pull half the skein out of the dye bath now and let the rest of this dye absorb into just half of the skein. So I'm gonna take it out with my tongs and just sort of twist it around my tongs to keep it out of the water. I'm gonna try. Okay, and on this side, I'm gonna add a bunch more purple. Actually, I'm gonna do some hot fuchsia because I have no self-control, but it's gonna be okay. It's gonna be a good idea. So I've got just a tiny little bit in my little scoopy scoop here. I'm just gonna add it to this one side just to jazz up this side with more of a purpley pink vibe. So maybe I'll do a little fuchsia first and then I'll grab the purple again because the base color on this is green, but I want it to be like magical forest. So I'm gonna add a little more purple to this side also. And then on the other side, I think I'll just add more green. So it'll be like purple and fuchsia and pink with green and then green with green. Just add a little more purple here, a little more purple down there, a little more purple over here. Now we'll just let that soak in for a minute. All right, that's looking more, more purple, kind of, kind of a brownish sort of mucky color. Not that I don't like it. It's just a little bit more of a brown energy in comparison to this bright green. The bottom half is a lot more of a brownish color, but that's okay because science is experimentation. There we go. I'm gonna put the rest of the yarn back into the water. And we'll see what happens there. All right, it's been about five minutes. I moved the yarn around again to pull out more of that green side because I don't want to lose the green. The yarn is no longer absorbing <laughs> any dye. So I think what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this one out, put it in the sink for a minute, and I'm going to put the other one into the dye bath. Is this a good idea? Possibly. Is it a bad idea? Also possibly. Now I'm gonna take the second one, which I've accidentally stained with my fingers a little bit, and we're gonna just put half of it into that dye pot to absorb the half whatever dye is left in the pot, which seems to just be pink. I'm just gonna put half the yarn in though, just to clear up this yarn before I uh, mix in some green for that other yarn. So I'm gonna pull this one out. You can see it's picked up some soft ballerina looking pink. I'm gonna pull this one out and hold it over a jar. Bring it over to the sink and I'm gonna bring that other one back now. Oops. Okay, so I'm gonna put this back in the dye pot. Actually first I'm gonna pour my mixed up green in. Then I'll put this in the dye pot and that should soak in pretty fast, hopefully. Add a little more green to the yarn. All right, the dye pot cleared from the green real quick and the green looks amazing. We're getting more swampy, which is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for like swamp queen energy. So I think we're gonna add Kelly green and yellow next because I want more swamp vibes. Grab my tongs, cause this is now hot. I'm gonna pull out the yarn where the green is. And I also don't wanna dye this color anymore. I really like the color that's shown up right here. It's kind of like a orange. Oh, it's all blurry. Just believe me, it's all orange and it's nice. So we don't want that to go in the water. And what else do we not want in the water? I guess this, ouch, in between spot, ow! Be careful when dyeing wool, it is hot. All right, so I'm gonna yarn, wrap over all this yarn that I like the color of. And now this sort of brown section, I'm gonna add yellow mixed with Kelly green. And I'm just gonna put that in there. And we'll see what that does. Ooh, those are fun little speckles we got. Ooh, some blue, love that. Maybe I'll just put the whole thing in. 
Remember a second ago when I was like, I'm not gonna do that, I like this color. I have no self-control. Okay, now for the final act, I'm gonna add a little bit more purple to the dye pot and we're gonna dip just a small area of the yarn into it. Actually, I think I'll also do just the tiniest bit of sapphire blue, just for the vibe. And now I'm gonna take the yarn over to the sink and readjust so that just the area that I want purple is gonna get dipped. So just this little section is gonna get purpleized. I guess I'll just sit this here for a minute until the water looks a little bit more clear. All right, the water is almost clear. We've got some really pretty blues now. Lots of sort of murky, muddy colors, which is <laughs> just what I like. We've lost most of the pink though, which makes me a little sad. So that means the other skein is gonna have to have a big chunk of pink in it. So I'm gonna just put the whole skein back in now. I'll pull out the blue area so you could see kind of like a greenish dark blue. I'm sure it'll look different dry than how it looks right now, but generally I think we've got a nice swampy color palette, which again is what I'm looking for. All right, I'm gonna put this one back in the sink for now to think about if we need to do anything else to it. I'm just gonna roll it up like this, let it drip for a sec, and then we'll bring that other skein back and put it into this dye pot to absorb whatever's left in here. All right, so now we've got this pretty pink and white. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna dip half of the pink and half of the white into this dye pot to absorb whatever's at the bottom of the pot. And I'll just come back in a minute to check on it once it looks a little bit more clear and I'll show you how it's looking. Oops, gosh, don't fall all in. So if you can see down here, I've stained this one with yellow with my fingers right around this area. And even though what's left in this dye pot should be kind of a purpley tone, I'm gonna add yellow because <laughs> I can't stop myself. And I'm just gonna let that dye this area of the yarn a little bit more yellow. Hopefully that'll look really cute with the pink. Pink and yellow are cute together. Actually, I'm gonna pop the other skein back in too uh, because more yellow is always a good idea. And I'm just gonna put it on the lightest area of this yarn so that the yellow can absorb into that, hopefully. <laughs> All right, that water's looking pretty much clear now. So I'm gonna pull out this skein, which picked up a little bit of yellow just like I wanted. Put that back in the colander, oops, on the stove, or in the sink, sorry. And this one picked up so much yellow, it's beautiful. Look at that color. So cute. Uh, so I'm gonna pull this out and we're gonna mix in another dye. I think I've figured out the dye method. I think I have to do dip dyeing. So even though it looks like it's pink, the water's actually clear, it just, the bottom of the pot is stained now. So, for that yellow and pink, let's do, I think we should do some more pink for this. A little scoop of that pink. We'll mix that into the dye bath to start. Yeah, I hear you. Now the dye bath is nice and pink. And then I'm gonna grab the yarn and I think I'm gonna put in some of the pink area, but not all of it to darken that pink side. I think I like this light ballerina pink. So I think we'll do this and do some dipping. Okay, I think most of that pink is now absorbed. So I'm going to readjust where my tongs are here and I'm gonna do some turquoise because I think turquoise would be a nice color to have in this palette. So pink, yellow, and turquoise. Let's mix that turquoise in now and it's gonna go, ooh, pretty quick there. Ooh, that is pretty. With the sparkles giving me Easter vibes, even though Easter's over. That's cute. Ooh, that is cute. All right, I'll be back in a minute once that clears up. Look at these colors. Okay, the blue is pretty much out, or the turquoise is pretty much out of the dye bath. Uh, this skein is amazing. It's like a unicorn rainbow, but I think it's too rainbowy, and I think we need to dull it. Oops dull it down with something. I'm not sure if I wanna put brown or black with it. Uh, so I'm gonna put it in the sink and I'm gonna look at it for a second and see what it feels like to me. So here is our rainbow skein. Pretty, I know it's pretty. Don't, don't tell me to stop dying here now though because I'm already not going to stop. Uh, I'm gonna dip this part here into the dye bath with some other color, maybe, maybe black. I mixed black and burnt orange to create a really dark 
but also a really pretty color. Well, I don't know if it's pretty yet right now. It just looks like ink, but I believe. So just believe with me, okay? It's gonna turn out great. I've got my skein where I wanna dip and I'm just gonna go ahead and dip it. Now pray with me that this does not ruin the entire skein. It's not gonna, it's gonna look great. It's gonna be awesome. Sorry, I forgot to press record. I'm adding a tiny bit more pink and salmon to the dye bath and I'm gonna dip just one section more. So I'm just gonna dip these two parts into the pink just to sort of brighten up that area a little bit. And we'll let that sit in the pink for a minute until it clears up and then I think this skein will be done. The colors in this one are so pretty. They're like dull rainbow, which is almost as good as swamp, but not quite. All right, now you can see the water is cleared up. The yarn has all the pink that it can get out of that pink. So I'm gonna put the whole skein back in now and I'm gonna grab the second skein, well, the first skein, and I'm gonna add it to the dye bath too. And I'm gonna just turn the heat up because these have all absorbed all the color they're gonna. I'm gonna turn the heat up just below a simmer and we're gonna let it sit there for half an hour to finish off its processing. And then uh, we're gonna rinse it out. So I'll show you what it looks like in half an hour, okay? Half an hour has elapsed. I'm not even gonna turn the heat off because I went and got a couple more skeins of yarn because I'm having fun and I wanna keep dyeing yarn today. So I'm just gonna take the yarn that we already dyed here. I'm gonna pull it out of the dye bath both of these skeins. And I'm just gonna sit them in the sink in the colander for a little while to drain off. And we're gonna start this process all over again. I have a skein of white, I think this might be acrylic. It's either acrylic or wool. And technically it is not yet wetted, but <laughs> we're just gonna live our lives the way we want to here. And I'm gonna just soak it in the actual dye bath liquid. We'll give it a minute in there. Actually, you know what? I'm gonna put all the skeins I have. I have um, three more. There are many skeins. I just wound them up while I was waiting for that other one. That one's wool for sure. This one is acrylic and that one is, I think acrylic. They are either wool or acrylic and this dye works on wool and acrylic. So I know one of them for sure is wool because of the way that it just hit the water. And that's this one for sure is wool. I think this one might be wool also though. Okay, so now that these are nice and soaked, I am going to, what am I gonna do? I'm gonna pull three of them out because we'll just do one, one skein at a time. I just wanted them to have a chance to soak so that they'll be nice and wet when they go in. So we'll start with this guy here, which I believe is acrylic, but I can't remember because I don't label anything. All right, so let's mix up some more colors. Let's do a base of salmon for this one. I'm not using nearly as much dye for these because the skeins are so tiny. Ooh, is she cute? Wow, that really bit onto that dye yarn really, yeah, really fast. All right, what's next, what's next? Let's put in a little golden yellow. Ooh, that's pretty. Now let's add a little hot fuchsia. I think I put a little too much fuchsia in, so I'm gonna grab one of the other skeins and just pop that into the dye bath to absorb the remaining dye. All right, this is too warm. We need to add some cool tones. Let's do purple. Oh, that's pretty. Okay, so the dye bath is still pretty purple and I don't wanna dip these full things in there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab another skein from our uh, wet fibers and we'll just toss that one into the dye bath next just to absorb the remaining purple. All right, while those sit in the dye, I think we should wash out the finished yarn. So I'm just gonna take some hot water, warm hot, not too hot to handle, but still pretty warm. And I'm just gonna rinse this out. All right, so the water is running clear. I'm just gonna squeeze this out and I'm just gonna go hang it up outside to air dry. And the next time you see this beautiful yarn, it will be dry and you'll actually be able to see some of the colors we made. I know they look a little bit dark right now, but I think it's gonna be really something, something special once this dries out. All right, so this dye bath is still not clear. <laughs> so I'm gonna add the last skein into the dye pot just to absorb the rest of that color. I'll be back in a minute once that's absorbed. So I have another skein of Briggs & Little uh, washed white 
regal wool. This has been previously scoured, and I think this might even have been mordanted with alum, which is unnecessary for this process, but I don't think it's gonna hurt. And even though it's not wet, I'm gonna go ahead and just put it into the dye bath. Let it absorb the rest of this dye so that we can move on to the next color. This is becoming a little bit more chaotic as we go. That's a pretty color though. Okay, now the water is more clear. I'm gonna adjust where these guys are sitting on my tongs so that I can color different areas of the skein. I like this bright orange, so I'm gonna hold on to that. I like this bright orange, so I'm gonna hold on to that. And this pink can just sit anywhere. And now I'm gonna put them back into the dye bath and I've mixed up some cherry red and I think cherry red will be a nice, a nice color. I feel like we should do turquoise again. I really like that one. Now I'm gonna move the skeins a little bit, get different areas, different amounts of saturation of different colors for fun. I still really like that salmon orange, so we're not gonna dye that part. I'm gonna pour in the turquoise and then dip dye the yarn. And we'll see what happens. Okay, so even though the turquoise is not yet fully absorbed, I mixed up some yellow with some hot fuchsia, the sunshine yellow mixed with hot fuchsia, and I'm gonna pour that on this skein here, just to, you know, jazz it up a little. And then these guys have now gotten some pretty turquoise. Give them a little bit of a dip. And then I'm gonna switch where they're getting colored again. I like that turquoise. Maybe I'll almost get to the salmon here. And then I'm just gonna move the dye bath around a bit so that these guys can get some of that yellow mixed with the fuchsia. All right, most of the dye is absorbed, so I'm gonna put all of the skeins back into the water and hope that we don't lose any of the amazing colors we got. And then I'm just gonna let them sit in here for a few minutes until the water is totally clear, and then we'll have a look at what we've got. I wish you could see these colors for what they really look like. It's just brightening it out, but they look amazing right now. Really beautiful rainbow. I'm gonna just turn the heat up below a simmer and I'm gonna let this simmer for 30 minutes and I'll be back when it's done. All right, it's been half an hour. I am going to pull these skeins out now. Unfortunately, the colors probably won't be super easy for you to see, but they are beautiful. And I'm just gonna put them into the colander in the sink. I know it looks like it's simmering, but it's, it's not. It's just barely starting to simmer. The weight of the wool is making it look like it's already pretty simmery. Ooh, this one looks like a, like a popsicle. You know those blue, white, and red ones? A rocket? All right, oh, this one's cool. It's like a mess of colors. All right, I'll put that in. And we still have some dye in the dye bath. So guess what I did? I got a couple more skeins wet and we'll just put those in so they can absorb the remaining color. And then I'll end up adding more color because I can't stop myself. Okay, I'm just gonna go over here and take these finished skeins and give them a rinse. This one might need to go back into the dye bath. I don't know yet. Maybe I won't rinse that one yet. I'll just leave it in the sink and we'll decide on that after, but these ones are done. I think this one needs to go back in because I stained it with the turquoise. So I think this needs to get something else done to it. I don't know, maybe this one too, the popsicle one. I feel like there's like this big area here that is uncolored that could have more color incorporated into it. I do like that raspberry tone though. And these oranges are pretty too, but I think we'll add that one back in. These ones are done. These are purple and orange and red. I really like these ones. All right, let's check that other stain and see. Oh, I love that orange. It's kind of weird, kind of pretty. I'll leave it in the sink so that I can just look at it while I'm dyeing these other ones to see if it needs, if it needs something else. You guys stay away from that dye. I think these ones could use more yellow. So I'm gonna go ahead and make a little yellow here. I think I'll do the golden yellow and the sunshine yellow. I'm just adding a tiny pinch of both. Okay. Golden yellow, sunshine yellow. And we could just pour that in. 
I've also got some hot fuchsia that I forgot that I had mixed up previously. And I'm gonna add that in also, but I'll give the yellow a minute to just sort of absorb. All right, I added the other skein halfway back in and I'm going to use up the rest of this fuchsia that I already mixed. Do I want to remove some of these yarns? Yeah, I think I do. I think I'll pull out this one. And I think that's good. And now we'll put these back in. And we'll just put that back on top of that one. Let's see how that does. There we go. Yeah, that's what I wanted. Something weird on this one. This one doesn't want to grab any dye. All right, we're going to leave this for another half hour and uh, come back and look at it then. All right, it's been half an hour. I'm removing the big skein. Oh my God, it's so pretty. <laughs> it's definitely dyed differently than any of the others, which is fun. I'm going to remove this one and there's still a tiny bit of dye in the dye pot. I'm gonna add a little bit more yellow to it and I've decided I'm going to do one more thing. I'm gonna take one of the mini skeins and I'm gonna go over it with yellow and see what happens. Little scoop of that. We'll just drop that right in the middle. I just wanna see if it'll do something magic. Just wanna see if more yellow can grab onto that yarn. And while we wait on that last skein with yellow, I am gonna rinse out the remaining skeins because they are all done. Also, my fingers are totally stained. Wear gloves if you're using Jacquard acid dyes. Oh, I love that color, pinky salmon color. After I've squeezed them out, I'm just gonna actually, maybe I'll do something different here. I'll pour these guys into the sink, and then once they're squeezed out, I'll put them into the colander, and then I'll hang them outside with the other skeins. I feel like my color palette always ends up going to sort of an autumn vibe. Okay, the yarn is done. Look at this. Look at these colors. Let's go through them one by one, all right? I'll move them off screen. And we'll start with the first one that we did. Here's the original color, just so that you can compare it for how much the color changed. Look at this, the greens, the blues. This is like a perfect Swamp Witch energy. There's browns in here. Excuse the staining all over my fingers. Uh, note to self, wear gloves next time. You can see the beautiful blues, greens, there's tan, there's turquoise in here. There's purples, there's some oranges. Whoa, this one turned out so pretty. What should I make with this one? I'm kind of obsessed with this one. This one's so pretty. I'll try and get some more beauty shots of it, but I think it turned out very well. I really like how the purples are sort of whispering throughout. It's not, it's not a bright yarn, but it is a very colorful yarn. There is a lot of different stuff going on inside this one. Oh, that's beautiful. That might make a really nice shawl. Love that one. All right, and now on to the sparkly one. Again, it was this white at the beginning and look at the rainbow that we achieved. I used almost every color in the dyes and it came out to be such a beautiful, beautiful skein. I think this one is something special. So it's clearly rainbow vibes, but the glitter in the yarn adds just an extra little level of whimsy to it. And I think by adding the black and the brown and some of the more muted tones, it kind of darkened down the colors. So even though it is a rainbow, it's not, it's not too rainbowy. <laughs> Does that make sense? It's not just a plain rainbow. It looks a lot more earthy. It looks like a rainbow in an enchanted forest. I love this one. I would really love to make something wearable out of this one because I want to surround myself in these colors. Look at these two together. Wow. Oh, these came out so pretty. Oh my goodness. This one is so dark. We added black and sapphire blue at the end for this one and it really darkened it down. Gosh, I love this one. Okay, and then we started doing the mini skeins. So we did a couple of them that were purple, fuchsia, pink, and I think we did some salmon in these ones. <laughs> these ones turned out really cute. I think they're very, um, what are you doing? These ones turned out really pretty. I think that the one with a little bit more brightness to it, it has some orange tones that I really like. This one's more of like a ballerina colorway. You can see there's some grays and blues and pinks and oranges, but then you see this one next to it and the oranges just pop quite a bit more. Wow. 
I do really like these two. I twisted them up into regular skein length so you can actually see what that looks like. Beautiful. And then we did a couple of interesting orange tones. And these ones are very, very foresty and I really love colors like this. I tend to go this way whenever I'm doing dyes. I tend to end up in a brown green sort of area. And I think these ones turned out really well. This one was the one we did last where we added the yellow in the end. And you can see it's got a little bit of a more, a warm toned green. So it's still green, but it's like a goldy green. I like this one a lot. I like all of them a lot, obviously. Uh, then one of the ones that we did, which was a mini skein of wool, this one came out beautiful. This is all like orange tones. There are other things going on in there. There's some greens. Let me see if I can find anything else interesting. We've got some pinks in there, but for the most part, this one is fairly orange. And then this one is really magic forest vibes as well. This one has a lot more of the other colors, greens and pinks. There's even some purples in this one. You can see on this side here, we've got the turquoise and the green sort of modeled throughout. And then there's the ballerina pink showing up over here. I think this one would knit up really pretty. What should we make with this one? Okay, so you tell me, what do you think we should make with this dark one, number one? What do you think we should make with this rainbow one? Number two. What do you think we should make with these pink ones? Number three. And what do you think we should make with these orange and greens? Number four. And in case you forgot, we still have one left. Number five, this was the last minute skein I brought out the Briggs and Little one. So this is a lot rougher of a wool and it's a thicker wool we did sock weight for these ones. This one is like a number three, number four, probably number four. And this was not done with any <laughs> planning or any forethought. And I think it came out so cool. I love the yellows in this one, the yellows and the maroons and the purples. I feel like this one is gonna work up really, really cool. Oh my gosh, I love it. I think it's so pretty. If you look at it next to the other rainbow one, it's clearly two different styles of rainbow. This one's got a lot more blue and purple in it. This one's got a lot more green and maroon in it. And I think that even though they're both rainbows, there's some clear vibe differences. I feel like this one is giving me like hippie and this one is giving me like enchanted forest. I really do love this dark one though. Oh my goodness, it's so pretty. This one is kind of giving me like fiber for the people vibes. I don't know if you follow her on Instagram, but she does uh, dyed yarns and they're often very dark. She always photographs them on a black background. Ooh, do you wanna see these on a black background? One sec. All right, black background. Ooh, maybe that's why she does it. Look at that. Oh my goodness. Oh, that looks really good against a black background actually. Okay, let's see how the dark one looks. Okay, that's why. That's the reason that she does it that way. Look at how beautiful that is. Oh my goodness. Wow, that is stunning. Whoa, that looks so good. That is so pretty. How about the pink ones? How do they look? Oh gosh, I am obsessed with yarn. I love dyeing yarn. You should dye some yarn. It's good for your mental health. Look at that. Wow. That is something special right there. Oh, like, are you kidding me? I'm just trying to get a thumbnail for these things, but look, I can't. These are so pretty. Oh my God, I just want to play with them. Uh, you got to comment what we got to make oh, for this one, especially. I am obsessed. Okay, friends, that's it for today. I hope that you enjoyed this video as much as I had fun making it. I love dyeing yarn, so if you like seeing me dye yarn, please like the video. Let me know that it's something you wanna see more of. If it's not something you wanna see more of, let me know that too. But let me know what you thought of it in the comments down below the video. Also, let me know if the birds disturbed the video at all. I'm gonna try and edit out what I can, but let me know how it feels, if it's frustrating or if it doesn't bother you, let me know. Here are the yarns I made today with the Jacquard acid dyes. I used citric acid. I also used a little bit of vinegar, but other than that, it was just those acid dyes. And I really liked them. I think this was a success. I think the colors just came out so beautiful, so 
saturated and dark, but also really still quite vibrant, except this one, which is super muted, but that's what I wanted. But I think that's everything. Oh, no, it's not. For those of you who are supporting me on Patreon, here is the list. Thank you guys, I really do appreciate you. Check out the links down below. I'm also gonna link some of my other dye tutorials so you can see when I use food coloring to dye yarn. I also use natural dyes a lot, so I do a lot of onion skins, black walnuts, some other cool stuff. I'll link those down below in case you're getting interested in natural dye. I'll also make a little playlist up here so that you could check that out if you're interested. And uh, I think that's it. I'll see you next week. Bye.